Good morning, church. This is our 10th church at home service. It seems so long ago that when we first started this, but I'm glad that we all can come together again to celebrate Jesus and to hear His word. This morning, we continue on our series on supernatural, and we are going to look at seeing supernaturally. In a time like this, where there's so much confusion and conflicting reports, we need to learn to see supernaturally. And for this, we want to look at a passage from John chapter 9. And we're going to ask a young man to read it for us. John chapter 9, verse 1 to 12. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbours and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Therefore they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. And then they said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. Of our five senses, blindness is one of the most difficult ones. When you are blind, you can't even see yourself, you can't see people around you, you can't see the blue skies, not the flowers around you. You can't see anything. Everything is dark. And sometimes we don't appreciate, we don't understand what blind people go through. But some seven years ago, in our church, in our previous venue, we hosted something there to give everybody an experience what it means to be blind. We darkened up the whole place, blocked up all sources of light that could come in. And in fact, they even built a small short tunnel to prevent light from coming through. And that was when we hosted the Light in the Dark concert. We paid money, uh, different people paid money to come in so that they can have this experience of what it means to be blind and listen to somebody singing and playing on the piano uh, uh, together. This was in aid of a certain group which wanted to buy, uh, import a guide dog for the blind. And here you see on the screen a picture of that, uh, of that dog. But unfortunately, about a few weeks ago, I read in the papers that the first guide dog for the blind in Malaysia that we, sponsor, we helped to sponsor had passed away. And what happened during this concert was simply this. All of us to go in, we had to go in uh, guided by somebody who was blind. Uh, as we went inside, the, because it was quite an experience to so suddenly walk into the darkness and don't see anything and had to depend on this blind person leading us one by one, row by row to our seats. And it was an experience sitting there in the dark, hearing good music and good singing but not being able to see at all. That gave us a brief idea, a small idea of what it means to be blind. In the Bible, the Bible often talks about physical blindness in a very figurative sense to describe spiritual blindness. 
What is spiritual blindness? I want to simply de define that spiritual blindness is when we are unable to see Jesus in all His fullness. When we do not see Jesus in all His glory, when we do not see Jesus in all His majesty, when we don't understand what Jesus has done for us on the cross, the loveliness and the completion of all that He has accomplished for us and how He is now sitting on the throne as the Lamb that was slain coming in majesty, in all authority, and to rule over the earth and the world. When we, don't, when we fail to see this, we are, what the Bible says, spiritually blind. And what is the solution to spiritual blindness? It is when the light of Jesus, the true light, Jesus, the light of the world, shines into our lives. And this morning, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a while. But first of all, how do we see Different when we don't see properly, if some of us, many we, we are not blind. Many of us are not blind. Uh, we can see, but our sight is often uh, affected, determined by how we see, and how we see is actually determined by the lens that we see through. You know, some five years ago, I went for a cataract operation. Actually, I didn't know I needed a cataract operation. I took my mother to the, to the specialist, to her, to her eye specialist, because she was complaining about something in her eyes. And the, the eye specialist said, oh, she needed a cataract operation. She had one on the other eye, and on this other eye, she needed a cataract operation. But the specialist didn't want to do it for her because my mother was hunched back. He said, she can't lie down still. I can't do it for her. And so because of that, I was just thinking, say, why don't you have a look at my eyes? Because the same symptoms seem to be uh, also present in my eyes. So she had to look at my eye and she saw. She had to look at my eye and then she, she said, you have also got cataract. And you're not just that, you're also a glaucoma. And so my children got a second opinion for me in another, in, an, in another medical center, and I went for that operation. It was a quick operation, just a couple of minutes. Uh, it was all over. And then I came out with a, with a what they call a pirate uh, covering over my eye, and then uh, slept through, it, through the night with it. The next day, I woke up and suddenly the world looked so different. I could see everything so bright and so, you know, in its full radiance. I went, I went with my wife to the park. I saw how the leaves are so green, which I never saw before. And when the flowers, uh, in, in all its beauty, I didn't see all this before. In the past, when my, the lens of my eyes were with cataract, it was all clouded. I saw gray tones, some, some colors, but all, all, all blur and all not so sharp. But the lens made all the difference. The clear lens that they implanted into my eye made all the difference for me. And so, similarly for us too, we need Jesus to change, supernaturally change the, light, the, the, the lens of our eyes so that we may see clearly. So what do we need? What do we mean when we see when we talk about seeing supernaturally? First of all, we need to see as Jesus sees. So in this passage, we read that in verse one. Now, as Jesus passed by, he was coming out of the temple. They were going to stone him because he said, "Before Abraham was, I am," and so they, he was claiming to be God. And they were going to stone him, but he he walked through them unharmed. And as he was walking out of the temple, he saw this man who was blind from birth. He saw this man. You know, this blind man was blind from birth. He couldn't see his, himself. He couldn't see his mother. He couldn't see anybody. He couldn't look for Jesus. He could have heard about Jesus. Being a beggar at, at the temple, he must have heard about what Jesus was saying, he, uh, what Jesus was teaching there, what Jesus was doing there. But he couldn't see Jesus. He couldn't look for Jesus. He couldn't find Jesus. But the scripture tells us Jesus saw him. And that's the good news. You know, sometimes we may be so blinded that we don't see Jesus. But Jesus sees us and Jesus stopped to look at us. And Jesus stopped for that moment to look at him. And then what happened? Then the disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? 
You know, the disciples was blind to what Jesus was seeing. They were blind to the pain of the blind man. Here was a man who, who was suffering because he was blind. He couldn't see. He couldn't, he couldn't enjoy life to all his, in all his fullness. He couldn't see his family. He couldn't see what people were talking about. And because he couldn't see, he couldn't work. And so he had to be there begging. But the disciples were blind to his pain. And not just that, they added to his pain. While the blind man could not see them, the blind man could hear them. And they asked in front of him, Rabbi, who sinned? What's the cause of this man's blindness? Who sinned? He sinned or his parents sinned? And that must have caused him so much anguish. Already he was suffering, and now they're, 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 they're condemning him further. They were with Jesus. The disciples were with Jesus for a while now. They saw his miracles. They saw what he could do. But they were blind to what Jesus can do and will do for this man. And sometimes we are like this too. We don't see as Jesus see. Instead of seeing as Jesus see, they saw him as a point for philosophical discussion. They wanted to ask Jesus. They're more interested in, 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 in tickling their own minds to see who sinned? Huh? Is this because this man sinned or his parents sinned that he was blind? They were more interested in that. And we are sometimes like that. We don't see the pain of people around us. You know, in this pandemic, different people are suffering. Many of people of those within our own church and beyond our churches are suffering because many of them have lost their jobs. Some people have lost their businesses. They have seen their incomes come cut by, by drastically because of this, uh, this uh, pandemic and this the MCO and this economic crisis that's happening. Some of, the, some of the people, children in our church are also suffering. Many of our children go to, can go to uh, international schools and you know, schools where, where they can teach you online. But many of our children too also go to government schools where they don't have that facilities for them. You know, people are suffering. Do we see that pain? Many of people, we, some of us live in bigger houses. We have the freedom to move around, but many are confined to small little apartments. Five, six people in an 800 square feet apartment. Do we see as Jesus sees? Or will you only see people, we only see the situation as a point for discussion to bring forth our, our views? But Jesus didn't answer them. Jesus answered by saying, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. You know, they asked for, What is the cause of this man's blindness? But Jesus instead pointed to the purpose of God for this man's blindness. That God had a purpose. So while sometimes in the midst of all this happening, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of conflict and confusion, I want to say to you that God has a purpose for us. Amen. God has a purpose for all this. And then Jesus moves on to talk about His purpose. What is the purpose? He said, he said in verse 4, He said, I must work the works of Him who sent me while it is there. The night is coming when no one can work. Jesus sees His purpose and His work in His Father's work. You know, Man had turned away from God, but God's purpose is to bring man back to himself so that man can then enjoy his, his uh, company, the man can enjoy all the resources that God has for them. And Jesus said, he must work. Who says that in the grace community, you don't have to work? No, Jesus said, I must work the works of Him who sent me. And then He said, while it is day, He's saying that time is short. You know, sometimes we need to also pause and understand this, that time is short for all of us. Yes, we have only a certain length of time while we are still here to do that which God has asked us to do. 
the Lord has great purposes for us. The Lord has purposes for us so that we may become His ambassadors of the good news of Jesus, that we may share His love, we may share the message and point people back to Jesus. And Jesus goes on to say, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. What is he saying? He says, I am the light of the world. That means there is no other light in this world. There is no other light. And you know, where there is light, there is life. Where there is no, no light, there is no life. So Jesus is also saying, because I am the light of the world, I am also the life of the world. Amen. And when there is light, there is sight. It's only, we only can see. We can only see because there is light. Our eyes have been designed in such a way that we, we, our, the optical nerves and so on uh, work on the light that is received through our eyes so that we can see. And so Jesus is saying that He is the light of the world. There is no other light. There is no other way in which we can have life except through Him. There is no other way that we can see in a spiritual sense unless we, he, he, he comes into our lives. Then we need to watch what Jesus does after this. And when He has said this thing, He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. I want you to imagine the scene. Jesus standing there, people all around. And then He bends down, He squats down, He spits into the ground. And all along the earth there. You know, it's and maybe not one time, but he spits again and again, you know. Uh, he must have got a lot of saliva out to make clay out of the dust of the earth. The humility that you see Jesus exhibiting. Jesus was not proud to want to go, and go down to the ground to spit on it. And such an offensive thing to do too, isn't it? There's so much offense in it, but he didn't care. He, he wanted to do something. And what's the significance of it, you ask? Well, I believe that Jesus is sending a mes message for us, you know, in Genesis chapter 2, how did God create man? He created man from the dust of the earth. In the same way, Jesus is saying, I'm going to recreate that which was missing from his birth. I'm recreating his sight. I'm recreating the, 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 his eyes so that he may see again from the dust of the earth. Amen. And not just that, then the Bible tells us he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. He took the, he took the, the, the clay and put it on the eyes of the man. And he anointed it. You know the word anointing. When you talk about anointing, we talk about being set apart for a special purpose. Who do we? Who do they anoint in the past? They anoint David as king. You know, Samuel anointed David as king uh, with, with, with oil poured over him. Anointing means to be set apart for a special purpose. You know, Jesus was not interested in just giving this man physical sight, but it's anointing him to see supernaturally. Amen. He is not just interested in just restoring what was lost, but he's going to enable this man to see more than just physically. Then he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. You know, the pool of Siloam is something like half a mile away from the temple. Some of us, a few years ago, we went there. And in fact, the poor Salom was, was uh, from the times of Hezekiah, 2,700 years ago, when the Assyrians were surrounding Jerusalem. And then King Hezekiah built a tunnel from the Gihon Springs uh, underground so that when the Assyrians came, the, the, the people in Jerusalem had water supply. And the poor Siloam existed from that time until Jesus' time. And some of us went through that. We went through the tunnel. And I know some of us after that got very claustrophobic over it. Every time they go into an enclosed space, they feel very, you know, and it, uh, you know who you are, okay? And so, but anyway, Pool of Siloam was there. And that, Jesus said, go to the poor of Siloam. And what is this pool of Siloam? translated sent. You know, why did John put that in? 
John is sending a message to us that just as Jesus was sent to this world, this blind man was sent to the poor asylum. And so all of us have been called and sent out for that purpose to do the work of the works of Him who sent us. Amen. And so he went and washed and came back seeing. Remember some weeks ago we talked about faith for the supernatural, how we need to see, how we need to know the works of Jesus. This blind man knew the works of Jesus. He heard about it. And now he heard the word of Jesus. The word of Jesus was him was simple, seven words. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. And so he went and washed and he came back seeing. Have you ever wondered why Jesus would do something like this? For, ask him to go and wash himself? Jesus could have just spoken over him and he could have restored the sight. But no, Jesus wanted to give him something a little bit more. You see, Jesus looks into small, small details of our lives. Can you imagine that man going to poor Salom and as he washed, the first thing that he saw was his own reflection in the water. He saw himself for the first time with his own eyes. Jesus is good, isn't that? He's so good. He looks after small, small details of our lives. So this man born blind obeyed Jesus blindly and he came back seeing. Hallelujah! And therefore, the neighbours and those others who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is it not he who sat and back? They were all confused when he came back home. They were all confused. They said, No, maybe not him. It's somebody that looked like him. Then he said, It is I. Then they asked him, How do you, how do you know? How, how, how do you get your sight back? And they talk about Jesus and how Jesus you know, anointed his eyes and sent him to this pool and then he washed and then he saw. And then they were very confused because this is the first time somebody that was blind, born blind could see. And they sent him to the Pharisees and the Pharisees asked him questions and said, who do you think he is? He said, he's a prophet. The Pharisees couldn't accept that. They then said, they went to ask the parents, they thought maybe he was not born blind. They asked the parents, they said, yes, they were born blind for so many years, he's born blind. Then how did he see? The parents didn't want to get involved. The parents said, why don't you ask him? Since he's of age. So they went back to him and then there was some long discussion. And then he said, I don't know how he did that. One thing I don't know, I was blind but now I see. He said, one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. And then as a result, the, the Pharisees chased him out of the synagogue. They banned him from coming in. They excommunicated him. But Jesus, you know, Jesus, when Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, then he went to look for him and found him. Jesus completes the job. He went to look for him and he found him. And he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. You know, Jesus restored the sight of this man born blind so that he may see him for who he is, the Son of the living God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. This blind man knew about the works of Jesus. He heard the word of Jesus and he acted upon him. And now, he sees the full worth of who Jesus is and he worships him. Amen. And that's what the Lord wants us wants to do for us today. I believe in a time like this, Jesus is going to supernaturally, Jesus is supernaturally anointing all our eyes. Even as you're listening to me, I believe the Lord is anointing 
your eyes this moment, the, your spiritual eyes, so that you may gaze upon Him for who He is. Jesus, you, that you may see Jesus for who He is and worship Him. You know, many times we only have a, a clouded vision of Jesus. Jesus wants us to open eyes to to see Him for who He is, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and not just somebody high up, but who is interested in every detail of our lives. Some of us are going through financial difficulties, some of us have medical conditions, but the Lord is interested in Him. And that He wants to open eyes so that we may see Him for who He is. And as we worship Him and allow Him to, to, to work in our lives. Amen. So He is supernaturally anointing eyes to see Him for who He is. Not just that, He is anointing our eyes so that we may see as He sees. That we may look at others, we may look at what is happening in the world, we may look at different situations in our lives as He sees. So that we, that, that we may peace Him in our hearts to know that He is in control, that He is working out His plans in our lives, that He is working out His plans in the life of this nation, He is working out the, His plans in the lives of people around us, and that He, is, he has good plans for all of us. Amen. And not just that, he, Jesus is anointing eyes so that we may focus also on the purpose that He came into this world, the works of the Father, that we may together with Him be people who will bring, uh, will elevate suffering of people around us, bring comfort to people around us, be involved in making this place, this world, by the authority and uh, enabling, a supernatural enabling of the Spirit to make this world a better place for people around us. And more than anything else, that we may be people who will bring the good news of Jesus to people around us. And finally, He's anointing our eyes supernaturally so that we may watch what He will do in us and through us. I want to say to you, church, that the Lord has good purpose for each one of us. He has great plans for each one of us and is working in us, in our lives, slowly but surely, and in us, and He's going to work through us that we may be people who will be transforming agents, people who will bring change, people who will bring good, people who will bring comfort, people who will bring hope to a world that do not know Jesus. So this morning, I declare to you, Jesus is supernaturally anointing your eyes now that you will see Him in all His fullness. You will see Him as He sees. You will know and focus on His purposes and that you will watch and see Him work wonders in your life and through you. Amen. Let's all pray. Father, thank you, Lord for reminding us again that Jesus is the light of the world, that He has already opened our eyes and He is anointing our eyes so that we may see Him even clearer in all His beauty and all His perfection of His work, that we may know what it means to give the worth in our worship to Him and Him alone, that we may see as He sees we may, we may see people as He see people, that we may see situations as He sees situations, that we may focus on His purpose of reaching the world, that we may also watch the good things that He is doing in transforming our lives and using our lives to transform others and the society around us. In Jesus' name, Amen.